Welcome, beloved. Evangelist Gloria Marjorie, come to bless and love you with the word of our Lord. The title of this program is found in Exodus chapter 29 and chapter 30. It's all about Moses. So, beloved, we'll give you first the very heart of the gospel. The very heart of the gospel is the Father sent His Son Jesus to be the propitiation for our sins and that His blood would cleanse us from all our sins, everything, when we come to the Father. So, beloved, Jesus died. He was willing to take our punishment. He knew what he would suffer when he was crucified. He knew it, but he was willing. So beloved, the Messiah was scourged and beaten. He paid a terrible price for our redemption. And But we have the victory in Jesus because he rose again from the dead after he was dead for three days. And uh, so because he lives, one day we will live too. So the Messiah had victory over the evil one. So beloved, now just let us get right into the word. It's found in chapter 29 and 30. And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread and cakes, unleavened tempered with oil and wafers, unleavened anointed with oil of wheaten flour, shalt thou make them. And thou shalt put them into one basket, and bring them in the basket with the bullock and the two rams. And Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall wash them with water. And thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastplate and gird him with the curious girdle of the ephod. And thou shalt put the mitre upon his head and put the holy crown upon the mitre. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them and thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons. And put the bonnets on them, and the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. And thou shalt cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. And thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar and thou shalt take all the fat that covereth the in inwards and the caul that is above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them and burn them upon the altar and the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shalt thou burn with fire without the camp it is a sin offering thou shalt also take one ram and Aaron and his son shall put their hands upon the head of the ram and thou shalt slay the ram, and thou shalt take his blood and sprinkle it around about the altar. And thou shalt cut the ram in pieces and wash the inwards of him and his legs and put them unto his pieces and unto his head. And thou shalt burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto the Lord. It is a sweet savour and offering made by fire unto the Lord. And thou shalt take the other ram, and Aaron and his son shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Then shalt thou kill the ram, and take of his blood, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron, and on, upon the tip of the right ear of his sons, and upon the thumb of their right hand, and upon the great toe of their right foot, and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. And thou shalt take of the blood that is upon the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aaron and upon his garments and upon his sons and upon the garments of his sons with him. And he shall be hallowed and his garments and his sons and his sons' garments with him. And thou shalt take of the ram and the fat in the rump and the fat that covereth the inwards and the call above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them and the right shoulder, for it is a ram of consecration. And 
one loaf of bread and one cake of boiled bread and one wafer out of the basket of the unleavened bread that is before the Lord. And thou shalt put all in the hands of Aaron and in the hands of his sons and shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And thou shalt receive them of their hands and burn them upon the altar for a pinch offering for a sweet savour before the Lord. It is an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And thou shalt take the breast of the ram of Aaron's consecration and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord, and it shall be thy part. And thou shalt sanctify the breast of the wave offering and the shoulder of the heave offering which is waved and which is heaved up of the ram of the consecration, even of that which is for Aaron and of that which is for his sons. So it shall be Aaron and his sons by a statute forever from the children of Israel, for it is an heave offering, and it shall be an heave offering from the children of Israel of the sacrifice of the peace offerings, even the heave offering unto the Lord. And the holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons of them, to be anointed therein, and to be consecrated in them. And that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days when he cometh into the tabernacle of the congregation to minister in the holy place. And thou shalt take the ram of the consecration and see this flesh in the holy place. And Aaron and his son shall eat the flesh of the ram and the bread that is in the basket by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they shall, they shall eat those things wherein the atonement was made to consecrate and to sanctify them. But a stranger shall not eat thereof because they are holy. And if aught of the flesh of the consecrations or of the bread remain unto the morning, then thou shalt burn the remaining, the remainder with fire. It shall not be eaten because it is holy. And thus shalt thou do unto Aaron and to his sons according to all things which I have commanded thee. Seven days shalt thou consecrate them, and thou shalt offer every day a bullock for a sin offering, for atonement, and thou shalt cleanse the altar when thou hast made an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it seven days. Thou shalt make an atonement for the altar and sanctify it, and it shall be an altar most holy. Whatsoever toucheth the altar shall be holy. Now this is that which thou shalt offer upon the altar, two lambs of the first year, day by day continually. The one lamb thou shalt offer in the morning, and the other lamb thou shalt offer at even. And with the one lamb a tenth deal of fowl mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil and the fourth part of a hen of wine for a drink offering. And the other lamb thou shalt offer at even, and shalt do there to according to the meat offering of the morning, and according to the drink offering thereof for a sweet savour, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. This shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak there unto thee. And there I will meet with the children of Israel, and the tabernacle shall be sanctified by my glory. And I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. And I will dwell among the children of Israel, and I will be their God, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. In our chapter 30, beloved, and thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon of shite and wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof. And thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about, and two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it by the two corners thereof. Upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it, and they shall be for places for the staves to be it with all. And thou shalt make the staves of shite and wood, and overlay them with gold, and thou shalt put it before the veil, that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat, that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn thee on sweet incense every morning when he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord, 
throughout your generations. You shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall you pour drink offering thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it, once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shalt they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numberest them. This they shall give every one that passes among them, that are numbered half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is twenty jerahs, and half a shekel shall be the offering of the of the Lord. Every one that passes among them that are numbered from twenty years old and above shall give an offering unto the Lord. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel. When they give an offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for yourselves, and thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, that it be a, a memorial unto the children of Israel before the Lord to make an atonement for yourselves. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a labor of brass, and his foot also brass to wash with all. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. And thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water, that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord, so they shall wash their hands and their feet, that they die not, and it shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even two hundred and fifty shekels, and of sweet calamus, two hundred and fifty shekels, and of cassia, five hundred shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, and hin, and thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the pock, a pot curry. It shall be an holy anointing oil, and thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all his vessels, and the candlesticks, his vessels, and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the labor and his food. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing all unto me throughout your generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall you make any other like it after the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto these sweet spices, statue, and onture, and galb, Banum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense of each shall they be a like weight, and thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it very small and put off of it before the testament in the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet with thee, and it shall be unto you most holy. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, you shall not. Make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. And shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereunto shall even be cut off from his people. Here ends the reading today of Exodus chapter 29 and Beloved, I just want to know now. I want to know something. Is your name written in the book of life? Beloved, 
will tell you. Or are you one of them who was shouting when the Messiah was crucified? Are you one of them shouting, crucify him, crucify him, even though you saw the miracles that the Messiah did, how Messiah raised up Lazarus from the dead after Lazarus was dead for four days. After that, the Pharisees, they were very envious of the Messiah, so they decided that he should die. So they crucified the Messiah. Beloved, oh, were you there? Were you there? Were you there when they crucified the Lord? Were you there when they mocked him and scourged him with the blood spiting all over 39 lashes on his back? Were you there, beloved? Were you there when they nailed him to the cross? Were you there when they put him in Joseph's tomb? Were you there when he rose again victoriously from the dead? And Father, through all this, the Heavenly Father sent the Messiah to save us, make us rich as his treasure. Beloved, if your name is not written in the book of life, Beloved, let me just tell you what will happen to you, especially if you were one of them shouting, crucify him, crucify him, beloved. Oh, Lord, sometimes, Lord, it causes me to cry when I think of how the Messiah was beaten. Oh, blood spiting all over. Sometimes it causes me to cry. Beloved, let me tell you now what will happen to you. If your name is not written in the book of life, take a listen. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And here it comes, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let me repeat it. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Beloved, I urge you now, if you want your destination to be in heaven and not in the lake of fire, I urge you to pray with me. Just pray with me, beloved. Oh, Lord. So that your destination can be heaven and not that lake of fire, which is terrible. It will go on forever. You'll never be free. But with the Messiah, when you receive the Messiah as your Lord and Savior, you will live again. Because he lives, we shall live again. Messiah defeated all evil for us, beloved. So just pray with me now. Lord Jesus, Father, in Jesus' name, we come into your holy presence. I believe that you died to save me. I thank you so much. I confess that I'm a sinner, my Lord, and I repent for my sins. I turn to you. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my God. Adonai, Yeshua, everything you created me to be, everything you give me to use in this life, I surrender all to you, my God. Please take total control of me, be the driver's seat of my life. I do understand that now my body is the temple of God, Christ in me the hope of glory. And I thank you, Father, that you said nothing and nobody can pluck us out of your hands. Forever you are God and for forever we are your children. So, beloved, let's glorify and exalt and magnify your holy name, Jesus, and as well. Be a witness for you. Thank you that I did not need to do anything for my salvation because Yeshua Jesus said, It is finished. The Palestine in the Hebrew. Freely I've been given. Help me, Lord, to freely give the gospel to others. So, my Lord, because your commandment says, There shall not have any gods before me. I will surely not have anything to idolize. I will not love anything or anybody more than I love you once again. What can I say? God, thank you so much for loving and saving me from eternal punishment. I now declare that I am a blood bought sanctified, justified child of the most high God, and I wear the robe of righteousness in Christ. 
And so I know, Father God, that when you see me in that day, when I shall surely come to stand before you, and you see the blood of Jesus for me, your arms will receive me as your very own child. Father, forever you are my God and forever I'm your child. Jesus, I confess that you are now my Lord, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Messiah, and my coming King of kings and Lord of lords, and my God. Jesus, while you were on the cross, you said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'm so glad that I'm forgiven. And all my praise and thanks is to you, Adonai Yeshua. You said, no man comes unto the Father, but by me, yes, my Lord. I believe there's no other way to the Father. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but by you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. God, the three in one. My God, my God, thank you for receiving me and my prayer surrender. I know now that my name is written down in glory and that your holy angels are rejoicing in heaven. Help me, Lord, always to glorify your holy and wonderful name. And it is in Jesus' beautiful and majestic name I pray for the Amen. Amen. Father, thank you that for by grace I must save through faith and that not of myself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest I should boast. Beloved, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Beloved, my prayers that after hearing God's will, you are brought closer to Jesus. God honors faith. So faith comes by hearing the word of God. Shalom. Beloved, if you have just prayed to receive Jesus as your Lord, congratulations. You are part of the family of God. Your destination is heaven. You are the king's son or daughter. Your relationship with Jesus as your Lord will be exciting and satisfying under his guidance. So, beloved, let God's will be done for you and not your will. Beloved, just surrender all to Jesus. God's will, not our will, is always the best. You will have what God says you can have. You will be what God says you can be. You will learn how faithful and good God is. Wow, heaven will be your final destination. You will be with Jesus. Beloved, this amazing kind compassionate jesus who died to save you from eternal punishment wants you to spend time with him how will you spend time with jesus beloved here's how you read his word every morning then you pray just talk to jesus tell him everything jesus will be listening with love and compassion because you are precious to him and he loves you dearly so you can say abba father that's daddy god now, beloved, when you pray, how shall you come to God, beloved? You will say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, my Lord. Why? Because Jesus said, nobody can come to the Father, only to him. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Next, you start praising, thanking, and blessing God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Wow, beloved, now you are ready to make your request known to God. God will always listen and answer you. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes no. Sometimes not now. God will always do for you what is best and right for you. Don't give up. Pray without ceasing, beloved. Just have the deepest respect and reverence and worship for God. He alone is worthy. There is no God like Jehovah. Yahweh is God, period. The word of God says, be still and know that I am God. Beloved, you know, I just have a challenge for you. Beloved, this is Evangelist Glory Much coming to you with a challenge. As Christians, we are to tell one another of Jesus. I challenge you today to tell someone, whether they be a stranger, friend, family member, believer or unbeliever. I challenge you to tell them of God's grace, the free gift and the promise of their name written in the book of life. Do it today, beloved, while the opportunity presents itself. For we know not what tomorrow brings. Jesus is coming back soon, just like he promised when the trumpet of the Lord sounds. Jesus will come and take us all home to glory. This is Evangelist Gloria Marjorie sending God's blessing your way. God loves you. I love you. You are a child of the King. Oh, beloved. Till next time, God bless you. Take care. And now, Jonathan Kahn giving the ironic blessing.
to shine on your life. The Lord pour out the waters of his grace upon every part of your life. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob cause his glory of his presence to fall on you and the Lord give you shalom, life, fullness, peace, all the blessings of his love. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach in the name of Messiah Jesus, our hope in his name and all his people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Jonathan Khan. Yeah, now is Shireen to play on the strings. God be with you till we meet again. In loving memory of my beloved son and Shireen's brother, Emmanuel Christian, who is sheltered in the arms of Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. 